two boxers apparently evenly matched. For five rounds, it looks like it's nip and tuck. But is it? Suddenly, it's all over. One man is down. The other is champion. Why? What's the difference between the one man and the other? Well, to the untrained eye, it seems like a small difference. The champion's right moves the tiniest fraction of a second faster. But to the trained eye, the difference is not small. And this difference is the result of many superiorities. Some small, it's true, but all of them of tremendous importance. To the trained eye, they are gigantic differences. You know, it is all these differences, all these superiorities added together that make champions, that make a Packard. This film will deal with some of the differences which make Packard a better car. The differences which added together make Packard a champion. These are the important differences which we call the little giants. Warning, you are a salesman, not an engineer. But a good salesman is prepared to meet all kinds of objections, some of them technical. Technical knowledge is part of every salesman's equipment. Warning, this film deals with some of the technical data you must know. We urge you to learn more. But remember, the technical knowledge should be used only to explain packet superiority, not to argue about it. Let's go. Let's see why the Packard Straight 8 is a better engine than any V8 from the standpoint of service, simplicity of design, intelligent utilization of engine compartment space, and engine balance. How about the service angle? Oh, brother, let me tell you about a V8 engine. I have to get inside this job. So there's two cylinder heads and two gaskets to match two sets of water connections, and two gaskets to match. Two, two, two. Everything comes in pairs, like, uh, like, uh... uh I see what you mean. But what else? Well, there's the oil pump, starter, distributor, valves, and tappets. They're all really tough to get at. And when a part's tough to get at, it takes me longer and naturally costs the owner more gold. Then say you have reboring or valve grinding to do. You always have to work at an angle. Lots of garages don't have the equipment for angle work. And when they tell you a V8 can be repaired as cheaply as a straight eight, well, it's like saying two people can live as cheaply as one. It just can't be done. And so it goes with a V. Extra time and trouble for the serviceman adds up to extra service expense for the owner. For reliable operation and minimum service expenses, the simplicity of Packard's clean-lined engine is by far the better choice. And the shorter V, they say, allows greater body room. Perhaps it does. But do they gain added body room and comfort because of the shorter V? No. Modern styling requires a long hood to please the customer's eye. As a result, all the space gained by the shorter V8 is actually space wasted under the hood. Now, let's compare engine balance. There are two parts to it. One part involves the vibration induced by the rotating action of the crankshaft. This vibration exists in both the straight eight and the V8. V8 salesmen try to give the impression that this vibration does not exist in the V. The truth is that both types of engine use vibration dampers to reduce it. The other part of engine balance is never mentioned by V salesmen, and for good reason. It involves the reciprocating or up and down motion of the pistons. On this problem, we will let the voice of authority speak directly. This is a standard textbook on the subject of automobiles. Not automobile engineers, but men who teach automobile engineers have written it. They say, and I quote, 
The unbalanced forces resulting from rotating elements are taken care of without much trouble, unquote. That is, both V and straight take care of these forces with vibration dampers. However, quote, but the unbalanced forces resulting from reciprocating parts are more complicated, more difficult to balance, unquote. This refers to the vibration caused by the up and down motion of the pistons. They go on to say about this unbalanced force, quote, the degree to which balance can be attained depends on the type of engine, unquote. Well, which is the better balanced engine, the V or the straight? It is not the V. About the V, the authors say, quote, in this motor, the primary forces are balanced, but the secondary forces induce a horizontal vibration, unquote. And these forces, remember, are difficult to eliminate. But in the straight eight, the problem does not exist. Quote, the eight in line is inherently a perfectly balanced engine with both primary and secondary forces neutralized. Unquote. So, it's the straight eight for better balance. And our authorities are the men who teach automotive engineers. Let's begin with some simple facts. The valve and head linkage contains more metal. The more metal, the more expansion. The more expansion, the more clearance required. The result is that factory service manuals for valve and head systems specify over twice the clearance for their intake valves than Packard requires. This causes the increased chatter and the increased frequency of adjustment for which the valve and head is famous. Another thing, the valve and head linkage is farthest away from the oil source. Even with clear oil lines, it takes the oil longer to reach the linkage. This tends to increase wear in warm-up periods. More important, there is a greater length of oil line. This increases the possibility of clogging and oil stoppage. The danger of oil-starved valve linkage is greater. In contrast, the simplicity of the L-head makes lubrication more reliable, less likely to develop worn and sticky valves. Combustion is another factor of superiority for the L-head design. The shape of the combustion chamber you see here is the result of many years' experiment. Experts agree this shape is the best because it increases turbulence. That is, this shape most effectively mixes fuel and air so that the spark ignites the entire mixture, releasing total fuel power. In contrast, this combustion chamber is so shaped that fuel and air are not completely mixed. The result is sometimes two explosions. The spark ignites the gas-laden part of the mixture, the rest explodes an instant later through compression. The result of that double explosion we call a ping, or gas knock, in the engine. Ping means inefficiency, incomplete combustion, lost power. In order to correct this serious defect, the valve and head people were forced to compensate for the inefficient shape of their combustion chamber by distorting the flat or proved shape of the piston head at best a remedy. In actual practice, they fail to achieve the same turbulence we do. And the irregular piston head accumulates much more carbon. So it isn't even a good remedy. It's a clear case of L-head superiority. The L-head adds up to quiet operation, efficient lubrication, and better combustion. The result is longer life, fuel economy, a better engine. The ideal spring must absorb both light and heavy shock for some means of control over its flexing action. The old-fashioned leaf spring absorbed heavy shock because of the great friction between all the leaves. 
Friction also gave it control over flexing action. However, the friction was so great that the spring could not absorb light shocks. Light shocks moved not only the spring, but the car. Packard found the answer in a spring of graduated friction levels. Little friction in the upper leaves, more friction in the lower. The result is the ideal spring. The upper leaves are flexible enough to absorb light shock. The whole spring has enough friction for heavy shock and to control flexing action. The case of the rear coil spring is bad. Friction cannot be built into it to control the flexing action. Instead, heavy shock absorbers must be used. The result is a good riding car at first, but as the car gets older and the shock absorbers wear, leak, and get out of adjustment, control over the car grows steadily worse. That's why you see so many rear coil cars giving their owners a long, loping, entirely uncontrolled roller coaster ride. And that's why your best argument for semi-elliptic rear springs is a ride in a packet. Whether the packet has traveled 1,000 or 100,000 miles. All cars with rear coil springs require a heavy torque tube to transmit power from the rear wheels to the frame. This is added weight, not supported by springs. All cars with rear coil springs require heavy radius rods to maintain rear axle alignment. This is more weight, not supported by springs. This weight, unsupported by springs, is known as unstrung weight. It is common knowledge to engineers that unstrung weight causes wheel jam, lessens ride quality. Packard, with its semi-elliptic spring, needs no torque tube no radius rod. Unstrung weight is reduced and ride quality increased. But the Packard Springs dividend feature is this. They carry the power from the rear wheels through the springs to the frame. Thus any sudden power application is cushioned by the spring. Whereas with coil springs, power is transmitted from the rear wheels through a rigid tube to the frame. There's nothing to cushion the shock of sudden start. The result is spinning and slippage, which is not the best thing for tires. And when the wheel finally grips, the passengers are thrown back sharply in their seats. Neither result is desirable. And neither happens in Packard. Controlled, dependable springing and smooth power transmission result from the semi-elliptic spring and Hotchkiss Drive. These are the facts. Their proof is the Packard Ride. The first Packard was born in 1899. Only one other car building at that time is still in existence. So Packard for almost half a century has outlasted the field. It is no accident. Every little giant, every difference which makes a big difference, first sees the light of day on a planning board. In engineering design, the soundest thinking in the industry is first given tangible shape. Here, in styling, two and three years ahead of current production, Skilled artists bring together the lines and shapes which represent the best combination of beauty and utility. In experimental, the life-size model is submitted to the first careful scrutiny. Nothing below packet quality has much of a chance of getting through. But just in case, the model goes to the Packard proving grounds. Here it is submitted to grueling tests far beyond the requirements of ordinary driving. Here it is matched against the best cars in the industry. And the standard is, top the field. But all the planning in the world is worth no more than the skill and the craftsmanship of the men on the production end. It is here, 
in the perfect execution of every detail, that Packard stands out. Nothing is left to chance or guesswork. An example of Packard precision is the tropolometer. Accurate to the millionth of an inch, it is used to check surface smoothness. It is this combination of bold planning and scrupulous care for detail which is responsible for the superiority of Packard. It is this combination which breeds little giants. The differences which make such a big difference that Packard has been a champion for nearly half a century.